Hi everyone, this is your host, Tadifa Swaydah. Welcome to Qudwa's podcast powered by the CFA Society Bahrain. At Qudwa, we believe in the philosophy of paying it forward. This is why we are recreating our conversations that we have with people we look up to. We would like to take this time to thank Ahli United Bank in continuously supporting us in our initiatives. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of stepping outside your comfort zone and also to discover and overcome your fears and saying yes to stepping outside your own comfort zone. And today we're joined with someone who is very well known to be consistently challenging herself. And today we're welcoming Wafa Lubaydat, who is the founder and CEO of Abayn Hill, an award-winning PR agency in Bahrain. Over time, she has successfully launched brands like Sukkar, Barrel and Drum, Milk, and among others and also initiated and spearheaded a lot of empowering initiatives for women, including the Women Power Network, a podcast that acts as a platform where women learn from shared experiences and her latest venture, Women Who Read. Welcome, Wafa. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So Wafa, I've been following your ventures a lot lately, and I've noticed the thing about you that you're always opening up yourself to the possibilities of new experiences. So for example, other than initiating the Women Power Summit and the podcast, you've also recently launched the Women Who Read initiative and also the Dogathon. So why is it so important for us to step outside our comfort zone? Um, you know, I do two things. I wear two hats. I run a an agency you're correct and part of our agencies like on our mandate is to create our own events one of the events we wanted to create is uh, to have a huge event for dogs and dog lovers um, and then the women power network today which is a result of this event that we did um, started three years ago because I so generally like I can't do one thing only because one of my key personal values is growth i love like not i love but i value growth more than anything if i'm stuck in a place for too long i get very bored i want to try new things and i do that because i feel like life is so short there's so much we could be doing and i grew up with a mother who is like a yes person like she says yes to everything i was like mama you want to go diving how diving so i think if you grow up with a mentor and with somebody who says yes to everything so i grew up in with that all my life so obviously for me as a person i have to read cuz i want to learn and then i want to apply what i learn but saying yes is is a huge I'm um, catalyst to growth. So I say yes to everything. Uh, I, that's, I think, how I accelerated my career in my 20s. I just never wanted to slow down. I wanted to go very fast. I wanted to make mistakes very quickly so I can learn as a person. So growth is something I will not compromise on, like learning. There are two very important things to me. And I, it just felt very obvious to me that to become very successful or, you know, yeah, and everyone has a different definition of what successful is, but success to me is financial independence, having a profitable company, working with so many different people, um, having a diverse team. It just made so much sense that growth, like growing yearly, doubling my growth rate, du- doubling my profitability makes a lot of sense. So in order to do that, I need more clients. In order to get more clients and hire more people, I need to get more business. So I'm always on a like a super speedy, fast track to achieving things. So I'm always looking for adventures and exciting situations to put myself in so I can grow as a person, I can grow as a company. And to me, it's like the most common sense thing for me to do or the most obvious thing for me to do in order to get to the places I want to get to. And I'm very ambitious and I want to do a lot and I want to achieve a lot and I'm really... um, happy i have that appetite for for ambition so if you want to so if you want to achieve things you have to grow like you can't just be static you can't have the same skill set and as the world is changing and we're being exposed to these young billionaire tech people you're like why them and not me why can't i change the world and make it better why can't i impact millions of people why can't i 
do something physically that people are like that's impossible for you to do so i'm very much into that mindset that growth is the secret to my happiness one thing that i picked up from what you said was the key to growth is having those people beside you yeah 100 percent. and look let's take a step back so i grew up with a mother and i'm very lucky because i think sometimes you grow up not having any of your parents believe in you and you know and and that's okay that's normal uh that's maybe the norm actually and sometimes you have two parents who believe in 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 you and your they see your potential before you see it so they they invest in you and not just invest in your education but like you know they ask you what are you interested in what do you want to do and then they invest in it they're like oh do you like football do you want to travel what do you want to do like and they they financially get behind your dreams right they support you Um, So I grew up with a mother who believed in me. So obviously I believe in myself and she trusted me. And and, and that's one of her biggest gifts to me. So later on when I started to hire a team, which again, you know, I can't do everything by myself. And actually the fastest way for me not to do everything by myself and burn out is for me to delegate, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm delegating work knowing that not everybody's ready for the responsibility, knowing that they need me to handhold them, knowing that I'm not good at, I'm not a perfectionist, I can't be good at every single role. So the fastest way for me to have a profitable company is to hire a team, trust them with roles, they either sink or swim, and they learn from me as best as they, as they can. That doesn't suit everyone. Some people get burnt out, some people get overwhelmed, some people need more handholding, and then, but some people also flourish they have a lot of space, they have a lot of responsibility that, you know, and they feel very empowered. I'm a very persistent woman, just like you are. So when I have a certain goal in my mind, nothing will stop me to reach it. But sometimes being stubborn can be can be very overwhelming. And I feel like I end up sabotaging myself with in terms of productivity. How do you deal with stress and burnouts? So I have a very interesting relationship with burning out and stress. Like I've lived with burnout and stress for the last 12 years. It's been my friend. So every time I like got a client and paid all my bills and my salaries, I would be like, okay, I'm taking this money and I'm going to go travel. Like I'm going to treat myself to a trip. Um, I also really believe on weekends. I used to go to the beach a lot. Um, Any friend who had access to a pool or a beach or uh, go to like a really nice hotel, like with my parents, like, you know, like, you know, my parents always had access to these resorts. I'm not saying that's the only way for you to go to the beach, but you can go and have a nice drink and just get some sun. Um, So that was very critical for me to like rest and recover for the next week. I just knew that staying at home and watching TV is not rest. I just feel like I'm wasting time. I need to be outdoors, like in the heat or like where there's fresh air. I need to be taking a trip and then always always my best friend through stressful times has been running it's an automatic ROI automatically like uh, the endorphins would lift me up so I would have fuel to go back to work so how I manage stress pretty much my whole life because I used to wake up and rush to work and then I'm giving 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 I'm not receiving anything for myself Um, and now I started by receiving sorry giving to myself for first before I was able to give to others so if you read like the 5 a.m club by robin sharma um and i don't know if you were able or you know i listened to a master class by bob Iger, the former ceo of disney um and he does that as well and i get it and it's you get your me time before everyone wakes up and the calls and the emails come in so you get all your that's why to me waking up early is the biggest gift I can give myself, which is sleeping early. I have to sleep early to wake up early. And this is not part of our culture. We are night owls. We love to stay up. We love to nisher. We love our dinners are at 10 o'clock at night. We have Ramadan, which everything flips upside down. You don't, I think, grow up necessarily with people loving to wake up in the morning. So as I'm growing older, I'm mastering self-discipline more. um, And it's been a, a game changing skill, I think, to have as a leader. And to have as, and if you think about it, if everybody's doing the same thing and they're waking up at the same time and you want to achieve great things, you're not going to achieve great things by doing the same thing everybody's doing. You have to do things differently. I really resonate with you on this. Being a social person myself, I have this golden rule that my day shouldn't start with other people. It should start with me first, with my own ritual. 
it's different every single day but i have a habit before going to my job the self-work has been already done so i completely agree with you here you've got to give to yourself first before anyone else so saying yes can be one of the best things we can do to ourselves but sometimes it can backfire us uh, when it comes to time restriction and we've got so many things on our plate when do you say no in that instance so okay it, it depends on you know if you were asking me in my 20s in my 20s i was growing my career i didn't say no to anything i had so much energy like now i'm like wow يعني كان في نطاق مو طبيعية in my 20s الحين I feel like it's gone down and again I respect it I appreciate it it's, it's, I think it comes with getting a little bit older but in my 20s I had so much energy and I don't come from the school of thought in a mafi wicked you can sleep a full 8 hours and you can go to work for a full 8 hours and really no one works 8 hours okay I don't break or whatever or phone call or I have to go for a cigarette or, let's say you work 7 hours and then, but you're in the dorm at 8 hours okay Mali. you have 8 more hours so let's say another hour in Bahrain okay we're not in the same place we have 45 minutes and we're going to go 45 minutes to an hour in the car and then, you still have 7 hours so you're telling me in those 7 hours you can't go see your friends go shop Uh, go cook something go do an errand write something we have so much time in the day what are you doing are you working is it until you work 12 hours bad you have a couple of hours in the day to do something you love to do or go for a walk or go for a workout for i come from the school of thought no excuses you can work work out even go see a friend for coffee and you can sleep you can you can so And if you can today, you can split it up over the week and you can achieve a lot. So to me, it's energy management. If you want more energy, then if you ask, they'll say, okay, I'm tired of the job. Or like, I struggle to sleep or whatever. Manage your energy. So if you don't start working out, you're always tired. Work out, lift your energy up and manage your energy well. Sleep better, eat better. So it's it's all connected with each other. So my, yani, I never said no to anything in my 20s. I believe there is enough time in the day for you to do everything. And if you're walking around saying you don't have time, you don't have time, there are people busier than you making time. So that's a, يعني, I don't want to be judgmental, but I find that quite, it could be seen as a little bit lazy. So I try to make time for things. I say yes a lot. And because I've done that, I've done more projects. I've met more people. I've done more certificates. I've done more training. I've read more books. Because I, I think it's the filter that you wear. So if the filter that you have in front of your eyes is, I can achieve it, it's fine. I have so much time this whole week. Then you can. If you have a filter, ما في وقت ما بيكون في وقت. كل شيء الوقت بسرعة بيروح. You're wasting time. You're on your phone. You're procrastinating. ما في وقت. أنا تعبان. أنا. You know what I mean? So now I say no. Only because my role in my company has changed. So I'm much more on a strategic level. I'm much more of a door opener for clients from my organization. And I'm trying to build a whole subsidiary to the company. So I say no, for example, to certain projects. Or sorry, I say no to where my time goes. Because also, honestly, my team is capable. So if someone's like, oh, can we sit with you for a meeting? I'm like, no, I have a great, you know, I'll be happy to. But I actually have a team that are doing this better than me. You can go sit with them. So I delegate it because I believe in them and I believe that my time, يعني, I'm dedicating my time to something else. So I think you say no based on what your goals or your priorities, but earn the right to say no. Like, don't start saying no in your early 20s when to tell them, I don't want to do this, I want to tell them, I want to show them off your You're in your 20s, what do you mean? Like, earn your keep. Like, call entitlement mentality on my own. Like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go here, like, have so much experience that you are of value today i don't hire people unless they can solve problems and add value yeah i really agree with you here being fearless takes a lot of courage to jump and take the first step for my instance before i used to be super hesitant on taking on tasks and challenges or getting onto a new project simply because i either felt like i wasn't ready or I wasn't perfect at getting the job done, or I wasn't confident of my ability to do it. But then I realized that I'm always coming up with excuses of why I can't do a certain thing. And the thing is, I ended up that I either missed out on these opportunities, 
or I jumped a bit too late. And I learned the hard way of getting that out of the way and face my fears. So what's your take on making that big first jump? In Silicon Valley, you're more likely to raise money if you fail twice. So people don't want to give you money if you haven't failed. They want to be like, how many companies did you start and fail? Two. Okay. Now we know now. You've learned a lot, you know? I don't know if you've read this book by Elizabeth Gilbert called Big Magic, but she has this amazing chapter on fear. So she basically says, um, so we're always afraid, like fear is always with us, okay? But she's like, I've made fear my friend. So how I think of fear is if I'm going on a road trip, I put fear in the back seat, like in, in the back. So fear can come along for the ride, but fear cannot touch the music and they cannot drive the car, right? So this idea that fear is there, like we see you, but you sit in the back and let us do our thing, right? So we're not resisting fear. We're like becoming friends with fear. Um, We shouldn't be looking at failure as a negative thing. I failed so much. And of course, failing comes with pain. Failing comes with tears. Failing comes with questioning everything that you do. But I think in the long run, looking back, you were like, that was an awesome failure because I learned and I learned how I can be better. So that so I always look back on myself to say, what could I have done better in that situation? So I think failure are gifts, but we have to program ourselves to be okay with failure. I remember calling my mom when I was a student. I'm like, mom, I failed a module. Good job. Like, what do you mean? Good job. It's like, great. Now you have another chance to go back and prove yourself in a different project. And I'm sure now you'll work harder. So like when you, again, grow up with that voice, it's okay to fail, it's okay. Just try. The most important thing is to try. That's the best thing. So sometimes with my team, um, I'm like, when they make mistakes, I'm like, good, good. Well, if we lost the client, it's fine, it's okay. Did you learn how to handle it better? What did you learn? Okay, if I could do it again with this client, I would do ABC. So the next time I get this a similar client type, I know they're gonna be like, okay, I could have, like I'll take better care of it or I'll put extra effort or I will, practice different things you know what i mean so i never punish people for failure ever and i myself say sometimes i don't know if i'm doing if what i'm doing is right or wrong so we're gonna have to discover and see but i think it's attitude of being fearless which is more critical so here i want to talk a bit about gender um i read this book by sheryl sandberg it's called lean in she's the coo of facebook and she talks about a study where um there was a job opportunity given to to, to men or women. Um, the men who didn't feel ready for the job still put their hand up to say they wanted to try. And women said, I'm not ready yet for that role, so I'm not going to put my hand up for it. Um, similarly with exam results. So men always guess that they did better than what they did. And women guess that they did worse than what they did, even though women statistically have better test results than men. So we as women have to up our game because we always feel like we're not ready. We always feel like it has to be perfect. This is actually one of the biggest, most common themes in all my podcasts. We have a couple of episodes where these amazing, brilliant, talented women are like, I focus more on perfection than progress. I've delayed my learning. I I made mistakes that I should have done faster. It took me a longer time to make the mistakes. So it took me a very long, you know, even a longer time to recover from those mistakes. When if I did it then, I would have learned, you know? So again, I think there's different rules for men and women. يعني, for men, So we, what do we know about making mistakes and, and putting ourselves out there? We need to be careful. Right? It's all the wrong messaging. You know what I mean? So, and 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 it sometimes, يعني, I, nine out of ten times, I say yes to things I'm not ready for. Actually, my whole life, I was not ready for anything. I remember I said I wanted to be a, a, a magazine editor for Sketchbook. My friend, Phil Jamaa, she was Greek. She was like, you can't be a magazine editor. You need to study being a magazine editor. I'm like, I don't need to study anything. It's common sense. I think I can do it. يعني, ف- I wasn't ready. I became a magazine editor. Um, I wasn't ready to be a company owner at 20 years old but I tried anyways, I did it. I wasn't ready to negotiate contracts with CEOs of financial institutions or companies. People as old as my father want to audition on 
أعرضه I'm like pitching and invest in me and believe in me I wasn't ready for that no one trained me how to do that I just tried um, I wasn't ready to do Ironman I haven't done half a marathon and cycled for 190 kilometers and swam to I'm not ready for anything but I just I sign up I show up I learn I make a lot of mistakes I fall like what's the worst that can happen and my mom played this game a lot with me she'd always be like انت خايفة من شنو؟ I'm like ما ادري ما انا خايفة من شنو؟ خايفة من بيصير كذي قالت وبعدين شنو بيصير؟ So I'll go deeper into the fear. I'm like اذا يصير كذي then مثلا I'll 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 بتفشل. Okay بعدين اقول ايش بيصير؟ بعدين I'll be very sad. Okay بعدين بعدين يعني I don't know if I'll I'll take a break. Oh بعدين قلت لها زين بعدين I'll start again بعد شو اسوي؟ قالت exactly ف when you go deep into your fear you just realize it's all in your mind and you will end up starting again anyways. ف once you decamouflage whatever that fear is you realize that it's not so bad that i can always recover from this failure so you take more leaps yeah so i just feel like you're never ready for anything you're not ready to be married you're not ready to be a mother you're not ready for your first job but you try so you just have to say yes um i would love to share a story actually um in the first woman power summit there was an amazing amazing Uh, women I wanted her to moderate a session and she's like I'm not, I'm not gonna do it this year and she was part of our team to put this event together she's like I'm not ready this year maybe next year next year she didn't get permission to be a part of the moderators she just didn't get it from her job and she wasn't able to come she was devastated and she said if I just said yes last year I could have had that experience of being on stage and you know like we're not gonna do like this year we did a, we did our event digitally she might still be able to moderate you know but she missed the yani why why did you say no i also recently connected with a with somebody i admire um and she's really good at what she does and i said you know can you be on my podcast or can you be on the on the woman power podcast and she's like no no i'm not ready i'm just i haven't been working and i'm like but you add a lot of value she's like no no i'm not ready so like this is the kind of stuff that i'm just like just say yes show up learn it might inspire you you know what i mean I know the world is huge out there and opportunities are thrown out everywhere. How can we expose ourselves to more opportunities, especially given these situations? So I think first defining, you know, what your personal mission statement is. So like, what are the things you would like to achieve in your life? It's an overwhelming question. I actually have my own podcast episode talking about how to set your own personal mission statement. But where do you want to be in 10 years time, five years time? You know, have that vision of yourself of like your goal and and please for the love of god don't set it too low because that's like the worst thing you can do you need to like have some i call them big i mean i don't call them but you know it's it's your big hairy audacious goal right so what is your big hairy audacious goal what do you want to do and then from there I, i'm a big believer in visualization so like you should be able to close your eyes and be where you want to be like actually imagine what that looks like the atmosphere, the place, what are you wearing, who are you with? Like, if you want to be a CEO of a bank, like, actually visualize yourself walking into the office, sitting on that chair in the boardroom, like, actually having uh, a board meeting, um, you know, what, what, would, what would you be doing? Who would you recruit? Like, so visualizing it and just being there is very powerful. And then I believe in manifestation, which is writing about it and asking God for it and asking the universe, universe, one day I'd like to be the CEO of a bank. Like, Like, why not me? There are people who are my age who are now CEOs of banks or financial institutions or insurance companies. So it's possible for them. It's possible for me. You know what I mean? And then everything I've ever dreamt of or written about has happened. So I get very clear on my goals, but I believe in manifestation. So you're made, out of, you're made up of energy. I'm made up of energy. And I think we attract things to us, whether we work towards them or whether they, the universe is like, here, you wanted this. You know what I mean? So I also go for the opportunities. Does that make sense? Like, I think we sit and we wait. Maybe what we should be doing is you should be going to your manager to say, listen, I want to be an executive senior person in this company. I want to be like, I want to make it in this company. I love this bank. I love this institution. What do I need to do to get there? Not today, but what do I need to do to get there? Like these are the conversations we need to be happening. So now you have a clear path. You're going towards your path. So it's also taking, it's not waiting for things. You know what I mean? So when I say manifestation and attracting, I still think that's you're doing work to achieve those things. But I think doing nothing and just sitting and saying, 
mm, I want this role and not doing anything about it, I think that's where it's very scary because you're not being dreaming. proactive. You're dreaming and you're not being proactive. So opportunities means going for it, um, attracting it, asking the universe for it, writing it down if you're journaling, which is very powerful and you should be doing that. Um, and manifestation so it's a combination of those things thank you so much Wafa for being here I really enjoyed this conversation with you thank you very much Ahmed you've been amazing I hope I didn't talk too fast (laughs) (laughs) anyways thank you Latifa this was awesome thank you thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode if you like this episode please don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any episodes